Me glue. Yes, it's exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> I'm Jess Priles with Hardcore Carnivore and today we're talking about meat glue which yes is exactly what it sounds like because it's a product designed to stick bits of meat to other bits of meat. Um, here's an example of it here. This is the Moo Glue. This is um, a transglutaminase enzyme. It's an enzyme that occurs naturally in humans and animals and plants and it basically acts as a catalyst to bond together meat proteins. So the way you use it is by, this one's a powder form and you can either turn it into a slurry or just dust this straight over meat and then you kind of squish it together. This is the very technical version, obviously. Squish it together, you refrigerate it to hold its shape and hey presto, the next day you have a glued together piece of meat. So meat glue also has a pretty bad reputation that I think is actually pretty unwarranted. So I've heard stories about people who say, oh, you know, what butcher shops do is they take the meat glue and they take all of the crappy, like let's say chuck roast, which is a delicious but tough cut, and then they use the meat glue to bond it all together because if you use it properly and do it really tight, you can't even see the seams. You can a little bit, but it's hard to tell, especially if you don't know what you're looking for. So the story is that they'll take all these scraps, use the meat glue, roll it in a cylinder, and then sell that meat as fillets. Now, a couple of things. First of all, if you can't tell the difference in toughness between chuck roast and actual filet, then someone deserved to take your money, okay? <laughs> There's a huge difference in the tenderness of those cuts. The second thing, which is probably more applicable here, is that here in the United States, the USDA FSIS, which is the Food Safety Inspection Service, has laws regarding the labeling of meat. And you cannot sell one cut masquerading as another cut. So for example, you can't put meat glue on a chuck roast and then sell it as a filet mignon. It's not legal. Now that's not to say there aren't people who do it and that's an ethical situation and there's always bad people doing bad things in every industry and shame on you, we don't condone that. But on the whole, um, it, it's an illegal practice that shouldn't be done. Now, technically speaking, uh, you can put little filet tips together. So the end of the filet mignon or the end of the tenderloin tapers out to a tail. So theoretically, you could glue those together to create a filet and sell it as a filet because it is actually that meat. Um, but again, you probably would be able to at least see some variations in so many little bits being put together. And at the very least, at least you're actually buying and paying for a muscle that's as tender as the one that you think you're buying. So it kind of works out in the wash. Where meat glue is really cool is in the kitchen because it allows cooks and chefs to do some really cool stuff and also can actually help me cook meat properly as well. So I have a little idea about how it can help with some chicken and I'm gonna show you. I'm starting with two chicken breasts, and as you know, chicken breasts are not exactly evenly shaped. They're thick at one end and they taper down to a thinner end at the other, uh, so they're not exactly even to cook. But if I were to kind of layer them on top of each other and glue them together, I can roll them into a torchon, which is fancy French name for a cylinder. And that way I'll cut them into pretty medallions at the end, but also um, they will also keep each other much more moist during the cook because there's less kind of thinner bits. So I'm going to use the meat glue in a thin powder all over uh, the top of each breast and then layer kind of top to tail on top of one another. I put them into cling wrap that I roll really, really tightly and then pinch up the ends and roll it to make that cylinder shape and then it goes into the fridge for 24 hours. Okay, so here's our torchon. It's been in the fridge overnight and you can see I've got a pretty great shape here. I probably could have used a little bit more meat glue around the edges here just to make sure they sealed really well together. And honestly, this technique does work best for sous vide, um, but I am gonna pan sear it today because I don't really like the texture of sous vide. 
I'm gonna season it with my hardcore carnivore red seasoning and then I'm gonna heat up a pan and sear this just to get some nice color on the edges. So I'm gonna sear all the sides. Then I'm gonna put the whole pan into an oven that's at 350 degrees Fahrenheit to finish cooking to that safe temperature. So I'm looking for an internal finishing temperature of 165 degrees. Our chicken is ready and it's out onto a board and you can see I've ended up with a little bit more of a square shape than round shape and that's because I pan seared but the chicken is really moist and that's what happens when you kind of layer it together and just have a bigger piece of meat to work with and that was the idea of using the meat glue I didn't brine this it just stayed nice and juicy so the one caveat that comes with using meat glue for cooking is that you gotta cook that piece of meat the whole way through. So if you watch my video on is it safe to eat a rare steak, you'll know that you need to cook a steak all the way on the outside to kill off any potentially harmful bacteria. But if you then like introduce two steaks together or put together a whole lot of different little meat pieces to make a meat glue ball, um, you're kind of taking that potential bacteria and putting it all throughout. So whatever you create needs to be cooked well beyond rare or medium rare to be technically safe, it needs to go to at least 160. And that's why chicken is a super fun protein to use this on, because no matter if it's glued or not glued, chicken needs to be cooked to 165 to be safe. So uh, I'm gonna cook it to that temperature anyway, so I may as well um, have some fun with it and make those little roulades like you saw, or torchons, or whatever kind of French culinary term we're choosing to use today. So all in all, I think that meat glue, you know, it's a naturally occurring enzyme that is just a little fun tool to have in the kitchen. And as long as you're informed and understand things about how it's used and how other people will or will not use it and get rid of some of the rumors, you can be safe knowing that it's actually a little fun thing. Don't forget, I upload a new video every week, so stick around. I'm gonna share more meat info with you.